So this is problem number four from the 2019 AP Calc A, B, and B, C exams. Non-calculator question. They start you off with a diagram of this cylinder. Uh, so there's water in the cylinder. The diameter of the cylinder is two feet. And then the height of the water within the cylinder is changing because the water is draining from the cylinder. And that's all described in the problem statement right here. One additional thing that they tell us within the problem statement is that the rate of change of the height of the water that's in the barrel, dh dt, is equal to negative one-tenth square root of h. Give us some units as well. h is measured in feet, times being measured in seconds. They're nice enough to provide us with the volume formula for the cylinder right here. And then in part A, they ask us to find the rate of change of the volume of water in the barrel with respect to time when the height of the water is 4 feet. And then they want us to toss on some units of measure to that. So the question really is, what is dv dt evaluated at h equals 4? Right? We want the rate of change of volume or the derivative of volume with respect to time at the moment in time when h is equal to 4 feet. So in order to generate a d v dt, we can take the derivative of both sides of this volume formula with respect to time. So the derivative on the left-hand side is going to give us dv dt right away. Now you'll notice on the right-hand side here, what I did is I did not take the derivative with this dependent on r. Reason why, and there are variations of these related rates problems that require for you to use product rules. Uh, this is not one of them. The radius of the water in the cylinder does not change as the water drains. So since the radius is constant, and you have to be careful and not accidentally use the diameter for the radius, but since the radius is constant, you can go ahead and you can toss that radius value in, 1, square it, and you don't have to worry about r and dr dt floating around throughout the problem. If you did do the problem that way, you'd eventually at some point have to have the light bulb go off and realize, hey, dr dt is 0, so I'm going to put 0 in place of dr dt, and half of that product rule that you would have used is going to drop off at that point. Uh, but a little easier to do what I've done here. And then when I do the derivative of pi h, I can just copy that constant in, and that's just going to have the derivative of h with respect to time right beside it. They tell us what dh dt is. Now, they don't give it to us as a number. It's dependent on h, but I can replace dh dt with negative one-tenth square root of h, and then if I want to evaluate that at 4, I go ahead and I toss 4 in place of h, and this would receive full credit as long as you attached units to it. I did simplify it a little bit. Um, and then if you want to analyze what the units are, I'm, I'm going to go back to this line right here where I have the derivative notation. So this right here is from the radius, and it's really the radius squared. right? So this 1 right here has units of feet squared. And then if you think about what we have right here, dh dt is going to have units of feet per second since h is being measured in feet and time is being measured in seconds. And since it's dh dt, it's the rate of change of height with respect to time. So what I'm looking at right here, now the 1 disappeared because I didn't have to continue to show that as the coefficient the whole way through. But what I have out in front of this quantity right here is 1 times pi, which has units of feet squared, times something that has units of feet per second. So if you multiply those together, you're looking at cubic feet per second. You didn't have to analyze the units in that much detail. You can just kind of assume that since all the units matched up for r and h and time that this was going to be the appropriate set of units for dvdt uh, but that is part a in part b they say when the height of the water is three feet is the rate of change of the height with respect to time increasing or decreasing so they're asking us about the rate of change of a rate of change well a derivative is a rate of change and the second derivative represents the rate of change of that rate of change. So this is the rate of change of height. If we're asked about the rate of change of the rate of change of height, we're going to have to analyze the second derivative of h with respect to t. So I took the derivative of both sides of this with respect to t. So I get my second derivative of h with respect to time on the left immediately after taking the derivative of the left side of dh dt. Now on the right-hand side, 
you do have to be careful here because it's easy to just use a power rule on this, multiply this coefficient by that exponent, which is going to become negative 1 20th, subtract 1 from the exponent, and just leave your derivative like this. But you're doing a derivative with respect to time. And the height of the water in the barrel changes over time. So you're going to have to use a little chain rule here. So you're using implicit differentiation and you're going to have to multiply by dh dt to finish off your chain rule on that right hand side. You know what dh dt is. So if you replace dh dt with negative one tenth square root of h, this is actually kind of nice because the root h that's uh, in this denominator essentially because of the negative exponent uh, and the root h that sneaks in in place of dh dt, those are going to end up canceling. You've got negative 1 20th times negative 1 10th. Your second derivative doesn't even depend on h. It's constant. It's 1 over 200. And the units there would be feet per second per second. I don't think it asks for units, but that would be the appropriate set of units for it. So what can we say about whether or not the rate of change of the height of the water is increasing or decreasing? Well, since this derivative is positive, the rate of change of the height of water in the barrel is increasing. At h equals 3, it's increasing the entire amount of time that the water is leaking from the barrel, though, since it's non-dependent on h or t. Last part of this tells us that at time 0, the height of the water is 5 feet. It says to use separation of variables to find an expression for h in terms of t. So we're basically solving a differential equation here. So if I separate my variables, I'm going to be able to get the square root of h over with the dh by dividing by it. And I'm going to be able to get the dt over to the right-hand side by multiplying by it. I left the negative one-tenth on the right-hand side because if you think about what you're doing typically when you solve a differential equation, and this is a time when we're going to do this, we want an expression for h that's dependent on t, so we want to function h of t as our end result. We're going to eventually solve our equation for h, so everything's going to end up over on the right-hand side where the t's sit, so just leaving that constant there in the first place is pretty beneficial for us to do. It's not going to clutter things up a few lines from now. So when I do the antiderivative on both sides to get rid of my differentials, I did do the antiderivative right away here. So I get negative 1 tenth t. That is the side that everything's going to end up on, so I'm going to add my constant onto that side. This is really h to the negative 1 half power. So when I add 1 to that power, and then I divide by the new power, and dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, 2 over 1, I end up with this. You know, technically I should have a constant on both sides here, but you've solved differential equations and you probably realize since you're going to be taking this constant and putting it over here with this constant anyhow, when you combine two unknown constants, you just get one unknown constant on that side that you still are unsure of the value of. So notationally, it's just more convenient to leave the constant only on the side that has the independent variable on it. Uh, my personal preference is to solve for h and then figure out what my constant is. That's what you see me doing here. It's not the only option that you have. You can solve for the constant first and then isolate h. Uh, I find it easy to, to, easier to analyze domain situations and things of that nature by solving for h first and then solving for c later on. But if we go ahead and divide this right-hand side by 2, uh, the negative 1 tenth t is going to become a negative 1 20th t. Technically, when I divide c by 2, I get a c over 2, but I don't know the value of c. I still don't know the value of c over 2, so what's the sense in changing some constant I don't know the value of to some constant I don't know the value of divided by 2? Still just some constant I don't know the value of. Uh, and at that point, I just have to get rid of the exponent, exponent or the root on h, so I'll square both sides. Here is the general solution. If I want the specific solution, I can go ahead and apply the condition they give us, which is at time 0, the height is 5. So 5 goes in for h, 0 goes in for t. Uh, so inside this set of parentheses, really all I have is a c. So 5 is equal to c squared. Therefore, c is going to equal the square root of 5. And here's my function for h of t.